Okay, good morning everyone. This is Melissa with thestockswoosh.com. I'm doing a review here of Netflix. I'm in the room live and I thought I'd do this review here of Netflix. Last week, last week it was Wednesday? Yeah, it was Wednesday. Wednesday I was talking about this and I really, 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 really knew that Netflix would gap up. And I said it was going to be medium or big. Medium meaning 375 to 385-ish. But in an ideal world, Netflix gaps up to 400. Actually, that's what it did. Not only did it do that, it actually gapped and continued just getting bought like everywhere. All the night before, the morning, everything. Netflix actually opened almost at 415. When I went to bed at night, it was at 404 that night. And in the morning, then it opened at 41464. That is beautiful. Now, in the room that day, I said there wasn't anything to do with this. You can't go long this year. It opened and reverse swooshed. I'll go, I'll talk about that in a minute. Also, these bars make no sense. Something's going on here with this. They didn't really close like that. They were bullish those two days. And the mark on Netflix did actually really got neutral up a little bit today and is rallying. Actually, this morning when I looked at Netflix, it was over 440. Let's just look at the pre-market of Netflix this morning. It was over 440 this morning. Netflix hit the first target for a longer-term trade on Friday. For those of you that were in here, you got it. And or that were signed up for the swing trade letter, you got it. I did call Netflix as a swing trade. This was a great call. Those numbers in there, every single one of those numbers in that Netflix swing trade letter will be hit this year. I guarantee it. So for those of you that signed up, the people, everyone that's here in the room, if you did this trade, did anyone do this trade long term? I know it's expensive, but if you did this trade, I am telling you, this is going to be, this could be your best trade of the year. This could be your best trade of the year if you're willing to hold it to the dream target. I'm telling you right now, Netflix will get to the dream target this year. It is almost at 500. You didn't do it? You didn't do it. Look, this is almost a, a this is almost a 450. It's like hitting the fact that this is hitting every target I wrote in the letter and within days gives me a hundred percent conviction that it is going to get to the dream target. This is going to get to the dream target this year. It is hitting every single solitary number I get in days. In days, this is hitting it. This, this, this is so rare. I can't tell you how rare it is that this would hit these kind of targets this fast. Okay, that is bullish. It is strong. This is moving ahead of the market. All right. This is probably the low Netflix for the entire year. In fact, it is. This is the low Netflix for the entire year. Not that if it breaks it, it doesn't flip around again, but I don't think that happens. All right. Did anyone do it? Philip didn't do it. Anyone else? Jaguar Paw? Anyone that subscribed to the Swing Trade Letter? Are you trying to tell me that nobody did it? Jeez, this is this is this is probably going to be again with a market. The market's going to be the best swing trade I, I had, and this too. It's going to be tie tie for this as far as the call. And really, the Swing Trade Letter is going to have a lot of bullish calls this year. It just is because things are going to set up like this. So let's go look at how it did it on the day of the gap. I was on the 22nd. And you, you couldn't have done anything with this. And I knew people were going to try to fade this, but there was no way to be made it as a fade. Netflix opened and reverse swooshed immediately. You would never, never have bought this on the day. But you wouldn't have shorted it. If you wanted to short it, here was the entry. It had no risk to reward. If you shorted this here into 409, the stop was massive. It was a $3 stop. Would you have made any money? No. You wouldn't have. You wouldn't have even made two R's. You would have scalped it and made one R. And actually, when you came down in here and this flipped and went green, you probably would have killed it. I know Brett would have killed it. So there was no money to be made in this, fading it or shorting it like people do. And how can you possibly short something? I mean, Stevie D was asking about this last week and then talking today about the mat. You, you, you just, it's just, you cannot go against power of money. Look at the stock right now. There was nothing that this was going to do to change what this did than on the day. It would have been a better intraday long if it had opened when I went to bed, the same price in the morning, but that was like probably completely unrealistic because it was so massively strong that it was just going to do anything it wanted until the open. And then obviously people look to pay this on the day they're traders. You couldn't have made any real money. Risking a dollar to make a dollar, risking a dollar to make a dollar 25 and a stock of a strike price at 400 something is really insane. That is insane. To take a trade with no risk to reward at a stock that costs this, I don't even care if you're trading with leverage. That's crazy. And to trade anything that costs this much against this trend here is crazy. And that's another reason why this idea of shorting the SPY, which is not cheap, and the QQQs, which is not cheap. It's a cost more than $100. Okay, and I, I don't even care if you have leverage. To go against positional trends like this in very expensive things, it's just 
flat out risky. Also, look at the spread in this. Netflix usually has a 30 cent spread. So, and you got to be familiar with this to trade it. Anyways, I just chuckled to myself when I got up this morning and when I saw how I traded on Friday, just power, 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 trended Friday. This morning was up over 440. You know, you, you could you have bought this today and made money? Yes. Didn't really have a correct setup in here. It would have been the better buy actually in the last two days, but it's just higher. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised. Again, we have to see what Microsoft does tonight, and that'll tell me what the market's going to do in the morning where it gaps. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix caps up again tonight. I, I Netflix could gap up tonight at 450 or beyond. I wouldn't even surprise if Netflix doesn't get to 450 today, but gaps up to hit the next target, which was 450. And this thing is just a beast. It's a monster. Netflix in the month of February, which I'm calling to be bullish anyways, will hit up over 500. And I don't remember when the earnings are out on this for the next quarter. But uh, Netflix actually I, is not even going to wait for that. I mean, this is not even going to wait for that to hit up onto the next number. So we did talk about this before. When this gap down here in October, it got down and was a failure. It was a gap down failure. Did that mean it was going to uh, correct itself immediately? No. Did it? No, not really. But this basically did hold. And this really wasn't what I would consider bearish. And that's why I, I just knew. I just knew that this would do it. And Keith had asked me over the weekend in the class, how did you know? I can't even tell you how I knew, but I know. And I'm telling you that Netflix is going to 750 this year. And I know that too, and that number isn't on the chart. It's nowhere here. But I mean, I, as soon as I saw this this morning, as soon as I saw this this morning when I did the last two days because I didn't trade on Friday, I said, oh my gosh, Netflix is really going to go to 750 this year. I mean, if you did this call in here, you're actually going to double your money in the stock. It's very expensive. It's so expensive. I know it. I know it. But this is actually going to double. This is. It's not just this. There's going to be other things too because of the market, because of this year, because of the way the market's going to run. And I said this also last year too when we talked about it. The market is going to have a move that is not going to double, but it's going to go like 30% forward, which is massive for the market to go and run in a year's time. Market's going to make a 30% jump by the end of the calendar year. So stocks, and we talked about this, some stocks are going to have 50% jumps. They're basically going to double their money in this calendar year with that kind of market. And that, that is what things are going to do. That's what I'm talking about, about a huge opportunity. Now, to the for the point of the gaps, for the day trading, that's going to mean volatility. Because anytime something, like if you were in this, like say you were in this and you took this, and say you were in this and you took this and it gets up to 500, you have a lot of money, you made $100, you're singing and dancing. And then the market has a red day and you get scared, or Netflix has a red day and you get scared and you don't know what I know about gaps, you take it out, you sell your position, you sell it. And this is how the whole year is kind of going to go down. Then you're going to sell it. And, and Netflix could have a big red day, okay? But then it's going to continue, okay? So it, that's what's going to create the volatility for things to move. The volatility is going to be in both directions and everything, all right? But it doesn't mean this thing is not going to hit the number or the market. Because anytime people are up a lot, and this, this doesn't make any sense, but I, I know how people think. Sometimes people are in fear even when they're up. It's bizarro world, but you can be up a lot of money and it fear that you, if you don't get out, you're going to lose it and you could actually exit a beautiful, fabulous, perfect position that's not doing anything wrong. And this is what people are going to do this year and this is what they're already doing because they're in fear. So you can't be in fear. You can't be in fear when you're down. You can't be in fear when you're up and you can't be in fear when you're just sitting here doing nothing. Fear is going to create actually red in the market this year that's going to flip around on top of itself. People can be up money and in fear. And this is how the market is, okay? This is what makes a market. This is what makes the volatility sometimes happen in the opposite direction, fear-based, even when people are profitable, more so when they're down, but same, actually, no, no, that's not even true. That's not even true. You could be up or down, and the fear-based panic could be the same. You could be up and in panic. Now, think about that. Makes no sense. The stop isn't miles away. The stop was valid, but again, you have to be willing to take this kind of risk. For someone like you, Philip, it probably wouldn't have been the right thing for you to do because you've taken and killed the QQQs long 55 times, and that wasn't even a big stop. So I think you've got to practice this more. We're going to go over it. Uh, but this is really, I guess this really is for 
you know, this is for the big boys here. That's that's for sure. But I'm telling you right now, there's not going to be a million things that do this like this this year, the Dublin price, but there is going to be some. There is going to be some. And there's going to be some, and they are going to be trades that actually can make your whole life, basically, if you've got the money. And this is one of them. This is just one of them. And this is where, actually, it really pays to have a lot of money. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know it, and then here, here they always say, well, people that are rich always make more because they can risk more. They have more. It's not necessarily in day trading because you're taking the position on leverage and you're in and out. We do a lot of things at cheap price points, and we do so much, more than anyone I know, not in the penny stocks. I'm talking, you know, seven, eight, ten, nine dollars and things up into 35, 40s, but, and that's realistic. I mean, it can still have good moves, but, you know, so for day trading, you can have a small amount of money and trade and make money because it has to do with the stock, but in reference to something like this and holding this overnight or even doing this intraday, it really does pay to have a big account. And this is the kind of thing where you can say, well, it's easy if you're rich, it's easier to get richer. And in the case of Netflix, the answer is yes. I'm talking about when I say big boy, I don't mean an adult. I mean somebody that's like a heavy hitter. I mean a heavy hitter player in the market. I mean somebody that just is just grinded it out, you know, like heavily hitting stocks with major, major positions, like playing the kind of things that Surf Dog likes to do, which I just never touch because there's no reason to. Wait a minute, let me go find it. This isn't the one. No, what's the one he does? What's the one he does? I can't think of it. This one. Priceline. And Surf Dog isn't here today, but let's just take a look at this. Another one here. And again, there's probably more people doing option kind of trades in this than day trade shorts in here, but people are short this now. Traders are short this now, and it's not as short. It's not as short at all. Target for this this year is at least 1500 and now you think, gosh, you know, how could that be? It's $500 away. But I'm telling you, something like this can gap up $200, $300 overnight. This is this is another one. This is the big boys trading this thing. But I'm telling you, there are people and options in this, and they're shorted. And I can see it. I can see it in the traipsing down in here. And this thing isn't a short. And, and, and who? this is what I'm talking about. Who day trades this? As a day trade equity? You'd be massive account or you don't do it. And I don't even have any feel any need to do that. But I mean, I'm just saying, look at this. Ugh. This really didn't have a correct clean setup in it today. Well, you could have taken on the one minute. You could have waited till 10 o'clock, wait till the intraday trend set. You could have done it around 10 o'clock. You know, it, it, it just it was a little slap in here. You'd really have to give it a big stop. Here was a clean entry at 10.30, but this is late. If you wanted to do it around 10, you could have done it in here. This is even going to pay today, but it was a late setup. This is now over the pre-market high here. This could get to 4.50 today. Let's look at the market quickly. Does anyone have any questions about Netflix? Does anyone have any questions about Netflix? I think there's a lot to learn here in reference to bullish gaps. There's a ton to learn here in reference to bullish gaps. And I forget who asked what last week when we saw that gap, when it gapped up to 415, or I forget. But I know, and Trader Guy was talking about this this morning about what other rooms do. I know that rooms shorted that Netflix on the gap last week. I know that other trader rooms did that. And I didn't do that. And I didn't tell you to do that. And point in fact here why. So, I mean, this is exactly why you don't ever trade against power money. You just don't do it. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. And talk about filling the gap. Wasn't it, did Netflix fill the gap? Did Netflix fill the gap? When it came in on the last week on Thursday, after the earnings, after it gapped up, and was right on the data to fill the gap? No, there's no filling gap anything. And I really wish you people wouldn't talk like that. I'm trying to train you not to talk like that. But I know that people talk like that. They did not fill the gap. It was not going to be a short down to 380, 375, 363, anything. And, and I tell you, in an ideal world, Netflix gapped up to 400 for an immediate buy, and that's what I said on the Wednesday. But I really thought medium, medium 375, 385 was very realistic, 100% conviction on that. But in an ideal world, and in an ideal world, when you know what somebody's going to do and it does it, what do you have holding you back? It's like you have nothing holding you back. Nothing. 
And that is how the market's going to be this year. When you see things, when you see them, no chance of failure. You do them, there was no chance of failure that Netflix wasn't going to gap up. And actually, once it gapped up over 400 or at 400, no chance of failure that this wouldn't run up and make new highs. And it's doing it. And this is going to do this before the next earnings, okay? This is going to do this before the next earnings come out, okay? Because this was the earnings here for the first quarter, for the January. I have no idea when the next ones are, but it's not for months, so, you know. Anyone have any questions about anything else? Anyone have any questions about Netflix at all? Any questions whatsoever? It's an interesting chart. It, it just gives me a lot of conviction when I look at things like this. And this, once again, is why you, you look at something, you read something, but you still have to have it set up on the day. Netflix rated good as a bullish gap. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But could you have traded on the day and go long on the day? The answer is no. You couldn't have. You couldn't have done it. And it's still following through. So as a day trader, you have to look at everything together and still see the setup in live time. That's why you have to be actually enough in touch with yourself to not be so stuck on something. Even if you like it, even if you love it, that you do it anyways, even if it doesn't set up. Because you're like, oh my gosh, I know this gap. I know it's a good gap. I love this gap. But you still have to have the setup. You still have to have the setup. So if you don't have the setup, you won't make money intraday. But Netflix is a good long in the longer term and in the shorter term and in the shorter term and the longer term. There's nothing wrong with this here. But going back to talking about the volatility, this is going to be one of those years where you'll see volatility in lots of things, including the market. It's not going to be one directional. The overall trend of the market is higher, but the volatility will happen in both directions and swiftly when it does, which will make for good profits in day trading. All right. But... I'm not shorting Netflix, and no one should. And even if it goes red tomorrow, no one should short it. This is really, 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 really strong. All right, this is Melissa with thestockswish.com. If you have any questions, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com.